Welcome to the Binning Report. Coming up in this edition, a look at improving combat medical care. And armor, infantry, and marines train together. Later, a combat veteran gets adopted. Welcome to the Benning Report. I'm Katie Cook. And I'm David Wright with the Fort Benning Public Affairs Office. Happy New Year. And with the new year, it's time for resolutions, and we all do our best to try and see them through. As we begin this new year, let's examine what it will take to stay strong, stay on track, and succeed in 2015. From fitness to finance, most of us are no strangers to New Year's resolutions, and that means setting goals. Well, first of all, you have to have a clear idea of what it is you want to accomplish. A lot of people have vague ideas like, oh, gee, I want to get in better health or I want to be in shape. you got to narrow that down so that you can see what the outcome is going to look like. So this can mean everything from what you weigh now and how long it's been since you've worked out. Or for finance, how much do you already have in savings or are you in debt? If it's uh, a big goal, you know, you want to brainstorm, you want to get excited about it. You want to think about what's the most amazing thing that can happen because that excitement, that energy is going to be the motivation that you need to get through the hard steps to get there. Another valuable step in this process is making sure you have a thorough plan to reach this goal. It takes that, that idea that's floating around in your head and puts it down on paper and where you start to work out the small details, again, those little, the little things that you need to do to create that path to get from A to Z. Um, and as you go through that process, it just starts to happen. Follow the path. It's easy. It's like, it's like following a recipe in a cookbook. You, know, you, you put in X, Y, and Z and how much of each and all of a sudden you're there. And once you set up how to get to your goal, stay motivated by keeping it fun and reminding yourself daily what it is you want to accomplish. Write it down, post a reminder on the refrigerator, or set your screensaver. Another helpful tool is the Comprehensive Soldier Fitness Goal Setting app, available for the iPhone as well as the Droid. This app puts your goal into steps from beginning to end. We're distracted all the time, but if you have little reminders here, post-its, screensavers, uh, your you know, favorite relative calling you and bugging you on a daily basis. Just all those things help us keep it in the front of our mind, and then when we're thinking about it more often, we make different decisions that help us keep track and, and help us down that path a little bit faster. But whatever your goals are this year, learning how to set them and how to succeed at them is vital so we can accomplish them year round. Melissa Bell, Fort Benning TV. The Army is always looking for ways to improve combat casualty care and battlefield survival rates. Fort Benning soldiers heard from an expert on the challenges of improving first responder care and why the medical and operational communities will need to work together to make it happen. Lieutenant Colonel Bob Mabry, Director of Trauma Care Delivery for the Department of Defense's Joint Trauma Center of Excellence in San Antonio, Texas, paid a visit to Fort Benning to address the need to improve emergency medicine and combat casualty survival. Mabry is a founding member of the Committee of Tactical Combat Casualty Care. The committee takes the principles of tactics, studies the reason soldiers die, and focuses on developing emergency medical skills with the greatest benefits to combat casualties, such as stopping hemorrhaging, chest decompressions, and opening airways. We know from this war, uh, from a pretty significant medical research, that the biggest place to make a difference in casualty survival is in the pre-hospital setting. Although the Army has a board-certified specialty of pre-hospital care, Colonel Mabry sees a need to systematically expand the role of the pre-hospital specialist with a focus on where to improve training across the Army. He recommends a few of these specialists be placed in key areas, such as the Maneuver Center, to work combat casualty care into the training toolkits of our future leaders. Combat leaders own battlefield medical care, but how much of that do they get in the Captain's Career Course? How much of that do they get in ILE at Fort Leavenworth? How much do they, of combat casualty care do they get at the War College? The biggest challenge Lieutenant Colonel Mabry sees is the lack of a standard for tactical combat casualty care, which is currently taught as anything from a PowerPoint presentation to a two-week curriculum. Mabry believes a uniform standard for all combat lifesavers will help improve survival rates on the battlefield. Our combat arms leaders have to understand that they have to have a piece in, in demanding uh, excellence in pre-hospital battlefield care and that the Army uh, medical community and the Army uh, line community 
uh, needs to work together to develop uh, doctrine and strategies to improve combat casualty survival going forward. Log on to Vimeo.com slash Fort Benning TV to watch the entire presentation. Then visit Facebook.com slash Fort Benning fans to join the conversation. David Wright, Fort Benning TV. In almost every basic training graduating class, there are soldiers with a love for this country that are not natural born citizens. They are willing to place themselves in harm's way for the United States of America, so what can the nation do for them if they wish to become citizens? U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services has opened new space on Fort Benning to serve the needs of these young volunteers. For foreign nationals with a permanent residence or green card who have volunteered to enlist in the U.S. Army, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services provides an expedited naturalization process to any who wish to become American citizens. While it is not necessary to be a citizen to join the Army, some military occupational specialties and security clearances are closed to those who are not. For civilians, naturalization usually takes anywhere from five to eight months, but for soldiers in basic training, it only takes a few weeks. The whole idea of military naturalizations is for us to recognize the value of soldiers who are already demonstrating their loyalty to the country by being a member of the U.S. Army. In addition to meeting all the requirements to graduate from basic training, these soldiers are still required to show a proficiency in English, pass a background check, as well as a civics test that covers important U.S. history and government topics before they are awarded their citizenship in a final oh. ceremony. The culmination of the naturalization process is a citizenship ceremony in which the soldiers and the applicants take an oath of allegiance to our country. In September of 2014, brand new office space for immigration services opened on Fort Benning. With dedicated staff now local, services are able to be delivered more quickly to the 80 to 100 applicants they see each month. We're really happy to have these offices on Fort Benning. It's part of the 30th AG. We're in the complex and we're able to be here at the same place where soldiers are being, they're, being, uh, they're coming in for in-processing, and so it's really a streamlined process for them to have everything in the same building now. From paperwork to interviews and background checks, efficiency will increase since this new local office will eliminate reliance upon staff from Atlanta making the trip to Fort Benning for limited visits. The staff is honored to be able to expedite citizenship for some of our nation's newest soldiers so that they may continue forward smoothly with their military careers. It's a very wonderful thing to see people who have demonstrated not only a desire to serve our country, but have a love for our country to, become, to want to become U.S. citizens. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services invites everyone to learn more at www.uscis.gov. David Wright, Fort Benning TV. Coming up next, a combined arms training exercise joins Armor, Infantry, Marines, and Air Force together. Soldiers working together on and off the battlefield is essential for mission success. Students from the Infantry and Armor Basic Officer Leadership course put their skills to the test in order to conduct a combined arm mission here to prepare them for combat. Lieutenants from the Infantry and Armor Basic Officer Leadership Courses spent 17 weeks training in classrooms preparing for the ultimate test. First-hand experience, combining learned techniques and working together as a combined force. It's huge for the students to get out there and understand some of the assets available to them, the limitations, capabilities of, uh, for combined arms fight. Uh, lieutenants get to talk about it in training, get to learn about it in the classroom when we get out here on this uh, training area and go ahead and put all those skills that they've learned and fundamentals and actually put them to use uh, in order to train adaptive leaders. Armor students from A. Bullock teamed up with infantry students from I. Bullock in a combined arms exercise that would have them working together with half on offense and half on defense. Leading the companies were students from the Maneuver Captain's Career Course, giving them the unique opportunity to experience the role of a company commander prior to serving as one. The students are seeing for the first time the integration of you know, reconnaissance, armor, and infantry and how they all work together on the battlefield, as, as well as uh, ISR. Uh, we have a Raven out here that's uh, conducting missions. Uh, so it's the first time they're getting exposure to three-dimensional battlefield and you know, the complexities that you know, are associated with combined arms maneuver. The goal for this exercise was to allow lieutenants to gain experience in a real-life environment. Students had access to tanks, dismounted and mounted weapon capabilities, and an unmanned aerial asset known as the Raven. 
which allows students to obtain aerial reconnaissance of their surroundings. We keep our units pure in their task organization, so all of tanks are together, all our infantry together, because it's a convenient way to organize, but it's not a very effective way to fight. So to be more effective war fighters, you have to split the units together, combine them, and they have to get training. They have to learn each other's strengths and weaknesses and learn how to communicate. We all speak a slightly different lingo. And having an ability to see a lot of that stuff will teach them some of the difficulties they face when they're young lieutenants in the operating force. Students issued operation orders, dug into fighting positions, and interlocked at sectors of fire to make sure their plans were synchronized. In order to get the uh, most effect out of our forces, uh, we have to utilize the uh, capabilities of all the different types of uh, forces we have. In the Army, we're all one team and we all work together. Uh, once they go into the force, uh, if they're reconnaissance, they're going to be in support of other elements, whether it's tanks or infantry. As armor and infantry continue to work together to produce agile, adaptive, and capable leaders, the experience gained during this experiment enhances the students' knowledge and ability to fight as a combined arms team. While this exercise is not a mandatory part of the program instruction, course instructors look forward to continuing this training in the future. You see him? Come on. Come on. Katie Cook, Come on. Fort Benning, TV. Fire. After the break, recycling is back for the Fort Benning community. But first, Fort Benning's picture this. Soldiers from the 789th Explosive Ordnance Disposal Company departed for a year-long deployment to Afghanistan on January 7th. Their primary mission will be to neutralize improvised explosive devices and conduct counter IED missions. The 789th EOD company was named the Army's best explosive ordnance disposal team of the year in 2011. For families who want to learn more about what their soldier does at work every day and how they can be a part of it, the Army has been providing opportunities to do just that for the last 20 years. Melissa Bell has the story. From deployments to social gatherings and acronyms everywhere you go, it's no surprise that Army culture can be confusing to those new to it. Years in and there's still things to learn. Easing the way for spouses and families has been the Army Family Team Building Program empowering families for the past 20 years. Today is a really special day. On December 16th of 1994, General Sullivan uh, signed uh, the policy letter put, making AFTB an official Army program. And then on December 16th, 1996, it was actually declared December 16th would be AFTB day. Celebrating this milestone at Fort Benning was the garrison commander along with AFTB volunteers. Proud of what they do daily for Army families, offering education ranging from customs, courtesies, and traditions to what to wear to formals, personal growth, and leadership responsibilities. Army family team building isn't just for the new spouses. It can be everybody from uh, someone who has never gone through the classes. You're going to learn something new. I have been an Army spouse for 23 years, and just going through the curriculum of these classes, I'm actually learning something every time I go through a different module of the classes or a different class itself. And it just it's a great way to just get out there, re-educate yourself, because some things, you know, with being in the Army for so long, some things you forget and you just take it for granted. So we just it's a great way to just get out there, learn, and just to re-educate yourself. Since 1996, volunteers have enjoyed the past 20 years and look forward to the next 20 years. Melissa Bell, Fort Benning TV. Martin Army Community Hospital is a sprawling new complex unfamiliar to most, which could make early appointments a bit intimidating. But there's a special group of people dedicated to easing the experience of everyone who walks in the door. Let's meet Martin Army's ambassadors. One of the top priorities of the new Martin Army Community Hospital is assuring a pleasant experience for every patient who comes in the door. 
At the heart of this focus is the thriving Red Cross Volunteer Program. And while volunteers can be found in a broad array of departments throughout Martin Army, they are most visible right here in the main lobby. These volunteers are members of the Ambassador Program, there to meet you and greet you with a smile. Well, the first thing is just to greet them, ask them why they're here, where do they have to go, help them get there, take them if they need to go. Um, just lower their stress level. Usually when you're coming in, you're here for a purpose, you don't feel well, they need a friend. The ambassador program can be a friend to them. Ambassadors can be relied upon to not only greet the patients when they arrive, but provide shuttle cart service, wayfinding and escorting through the new hospital, helping with wheelchairs and more. These volunteers range in ages from 18 to 90 and come from all walks of life. All it takes is contacting the hospital and you will be guided through the process if you wish to sign up. The ambassador program, you don't have to have any technical skills to be able to do that. All they need to do is be able to be friendly and talk to a person and help them to have a good experience here. With the opening of the new hospital comes an increase in the size of the physical facility and the amount of services provided. So while the volunteer program is in great shape, there is an increased demand. We've had a large number of the um, volunteers carry over from the hospital, but we're hoping to increase our numbers in the new facility. We've had a, a big interest in the new hospital, which is great, and we're hoping to do more this year. The Red Cross ambassadors also will encourage you to fill out surveys that are only designed to improve the patient experience with a very direct channel of anonymous feedback. The hospital does receive funding for return surveys, which in turn goes directly back into patient care. In many ways, the ambassadors of the Red Cross Volunteer Program are the lifeline of the hospital and can often define a patient's entire experience. For these volunteers, the reward comes in serving others, specifically those that already serve us by helping preserve our freedoms. When they, they walk in the door here at Martin Army, we would like for them to feel as though um, they're getting the best care or the best quality care. Um, volunteers play an integrate role in that um, because they streamline the operations here within the hospital. In fiscal year 2014, volunteers at Martin Army saved the hospital over $420,000. David Wright, Fort Benning TV. Blue bins have been dispersed across post in an effort to encourage Fort Benning residents to participate in curbside recycling. The residents have been asking for it, and a new partnership between Fort Benning and the City of Columbus has delivered. The Recycle Partnership is a public-to-public -public contract between Fort Benning and the City of Columbus, born out of an Army Family Action Plan issue. This was an AFAP issue about five or six years ago, and uh, the leadership has gotten together and pushed this thing through. The current leadership is behind us 100%, and the city's behind us 100%. We now are able to do this and I think it's a great thing for the community. Army families asked and Fort Benning delivered, and now has created a template for military installations to follow suit. During the month of December, 1,100 tons of recycling was brought into the Columbus Major Recycling Plant. 42 tons contributed by Fort Benning, and as a bonus, Fort Benning walked away with green credits. By getting green credits on Fort Benning, there's a lot of different positive things that happen. One, we bring uh, the green credits to the installation, so we get additional money for training. We get credit for our recycling. Every ton that we recycle goes into a pot at, at the Department of the Army because everybody's going green. And the more materials Fort Benning recycles, the more credits the post receives. But the priority is to eliminate recyclable materials from entering landfills. Instead of going into a solid waste landfill, it's something we can recycle and put back on the market. If you don't do that, your landfills fill up. Landfills are very expensive, $400,000 an acre. If you can recycle it and divert it out of your landfills, you save landfill space. And in Muskogee County, there will be no more landfills. This is the last landfill. It has got to last Muskogee County. Next time you think about throwing something in the trash, check to see if you can recycle it. Recyclable materials usually have emblems on them. Aluminum, newspaper, certain plastics, and more. If the emblem is there, pick blue and go green. Katie Cook, Fort Benning TV. Coming up next, this combat vet finds a happy home. After a heroic career of chasing enemies and chasing cars, one soldier is ready to hang up his leash as he settles into a brand new home. Melissa Bell brings us the story. 
their man's best friend, and they'll follow you anywhere, even into battle. But before we meet this little guy, let's start with a quick pictorial on what military working dogs can do downrange. <laughs> Long before the invention of gunpowder and from as early as 600 BC, dogs have been seen on the battlefield with the Egyptians, Greeks, Persians, Romans, and more. Used as sentries, on patrol, and even as companions, they still accomplish those great tasks today. And with technology advancing, dogs don't seem to have a problem keeping up, performing their jobs by land, sea, and air. Their incredible senses allow them to perform drug detection, patrols, force protection, and explosives detection. So now that you know a little bit about the history of our four-legged service members, let's meet military working dog Sam, a German Shepherd and newly retired after a decade of service to our nation. Sam is classified by the DOD as a patrol explosive detector dog. Mainly patrol meaning that he's certified to do law enforcement tasks. That's normally looking for bad guys and uh, helping a military police officer apprehend those bad guys. The explosive detection part, well, he was trained to detect uh, several different types of explosives from TNT, C4, demolitions cord, uh, nitro dynamite, water gel. Sam was born in Europe and trained at Lackland Air Force Base. After two deployments to Iraq, Sam's now 11 years old. He's officially turned in his water bowl, and thanks to an adoption by his handler, Staff Sergeant Bannock, he has a comfy new home to enjoy his winter years. It's fun. I get home from work, we play in the backyard, we throw the ball a couple times, and then we let him relax, come inside. It's getting colder out, so he put a fire in the fireplace, and he just sits and relax. As Sam's former handler, Staff Sergeant Bannock knows how Sam operates. During countless patrols, the unique bond between dog and handler grew strong. Where'd it go? Trusting each other with their lives. Yeah, I, I would say it's special because you develop that bond between the two of you. And when you work in law enforcement, you rely on your dog, your partner to protect you, and you protect your dog. So after a certain amount of time, you just have this, this bond together. So now that I'm actually able to go home to him and let him relax and spend more time with him, it's just it's amazing. Now adjusting to civilian life, Sam has traded in explosives for food left on the counter. A favorite pastime detection exercise that keeps this nose in working order. Melissa Bell, Fort Benning TV. I actually had a chance to see Sam in action. It's amazing what military working dogs can do. You mean like roll over? No, like search and rescue. Our co host the next Benning Report with me. And that will bring this edition to an end. But you can watch these stories and others on youtube.com slash Benning TV or at Benning.army.mil. And you can also like us on Facebook. From the Public Affairs Office, thanks for watching.